and we believe the Lord will keep reaching out to him because only him knows the way. Amen. In the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the confusion, it's only him that can direct us. But I have good news for you today that you have a very bright future. Amen. And most of the time, it's usually difficult to see your future. How many of you know that? Most of the time. Most people have to live all their life in realizing their future. Some people live all their life not even knowing their future. But I believe the Holy Spirit is going to open our eyes so that we can know our future. And one of the greatest gifts the Lord has given us is to know our dreams. Somebody say dreams. Amen. Your destiny is tied in your dream. Amen. <laughs> Did you hear that? Your destiny as a child of God is tied in your dream. Dreams are one of the or one of the ways, or one of the most effective way, or one of the most easy way God can clear the darkness in your future and reveal to you who you are. Amen. Amen. So I want to speak to you to, this afternoon on dreams. Watch your dreams. Don't play with your dream as a child of God. Your dreams could be where your destiny lies. And if we look at throughout the scriptures, we have seen the Lord reveal people's destiny through dream. Amen. Amen. Now, there is what is called daydream, or what we call open vision. But the word call it daydream. But it's a gift from the Lord that gives us the ability, even as you are seated down, God can just flash your future to you. How many of you believe that? You see, there's a level you can train yourself spiritually that as you are sitting down there, you can just go into your future. You see, the people of the world have so much used this uh, element in a negative way. That is why when you watch... Some of our telecasts, most of the things that you see on the telecast are a byproduct of what God, the gift God has given his children. You see, if you watch the, some, of, some of these movies, you see they, they, they teleport. They call it teleport. <laughs> they call it transmutation. They can just sit down and then just go into another world. Now, these are things they stole from the word of God. And then they began to use it in the, in the evil side. But I want you to know that that gift, God is restoring it back to the church. Amen. Amen. God is restoring back the gift of dreams. And seeing, I'm not just talking about, uh, you know, just dreams. I'm talking about seeing your future. Seeing where you are going. Seeing what you will do in the next five years. Don't, wouldn't you love to know where you'll be in the next five years? Or you just, you just want to walk into the five years. You don't not, not know. What. <laughs> I believe the Lord can open your eyes and show you what you want to do in the next five years. Do you pray like that? Most people don't pray like that. They just say, Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for keeping my family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just keep thanking the Lord. Every day you keep thanking the Lord. Don't you bother to ask him, Lord, hey, what will happen in the next five years to my life? I'm telling you, our life has been a life of asking the Lord, what next? I'm not in Indonesia by accident. I'm in Indonesia by divine appointment. Amen. Because I've seen it. And God has opened doors to other nations also. And we've seen it and we know we're going to be there. So you as a child of God, you need to know, you need to ask the Lord. How about your children? 
Are you just raising? Yes, someone said, just, just raise them in the way of the Lord. <laughs> just raise them. You need to know what they will become. Not just go to Sunday school, learn all the Sunday school, <laughs> listen to your teacher, grow up to be a good child. No, that is more than that. You need to know what they will become. So, because when you have a revelation, a vision of what they will become, what happens? You pattern their life to what God has shown you. Dreams are very important. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29 says, look at it, Deuteronomy 29 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord, our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of, the, of this law. The secret, you see, God is good at keeping secrets. But God doesn't want to keep secrets from us. The Bible said the secret things belong to the Lord. But there are things God doesn't want to keep secret concerning your life. He wants to reveal things concerning your life so that you don't live in the darkness. So that you don't live in uncertainty. So that you don't live as somebody who doesn't know where he's going. Yes, we know that our primary assignment is to go to heaven, yes. Once we're born again, we're spirit-filled. That's the primary. But how about the secondary one here on earth? There is still a space you need to occupy on the earth. There is a region you need to still dominate on the earth. Because God has given every human being a, a region, a place, a position to occupy before you go to heaven. So don't just wait, say, hey, all our dreams is just go to heaven. Yes, that's the primary thing. We are all going there, and we'll all be there. Huh? <laughs> In Jesus' name. We'll all be there. Somebody say, ah, how, can't you see the way sin, Christians are backsliding? Uh, say, don't worry. In heaven, there will be more people in heaven than in hell. Hmm? You don't believe? God opened the eyes. That's what I'm talking about, dreams and revelation. Dreams are, God opened the eyes of John in the island of Patmos. And God began to show John so many things. Now, during the time of John was the time the believers were persecuted. The, the believers were so small. And they thought that Jesus Christ was coming in their own time. And they knew themselves that they were very few. And they were so convinced, hey, you mean in heaven, it's just going to be just the few of us. <laughs> and they were so confused. And when they started killing all the disciples, ah, they said, ah, man, we are really going to be very small in heaven. But God took John said, let me show you something. Let me give you a dream of the future. Let me give you an insight into the future. Let me remove this darkness that is covering your face and let me show you what will happen in the future. future. And then God took as, I mean, John was in the island of Patmos. God began to open his eyes. God began to open chapters. And it got to a point. God said, let me show you. In heaven, on that day, there will be an uncountable number of people. God called them tribes from every nation, from every language, from every dialect, from every tongues. Thousands thousands upon thousands innumerable angels innumerable company of people in heaven so he was assured we ain't gonna be few in heaven <laughs> we're gonna be multitudes so with that revelation he had the confidence to begin to write the book of revelation which is a book of dream opening the future Opening, removing the darkness of the future and tell them, hey, look, in heaven, we are going to be more, more. Hallelujah. Coming back to the topic today. Hidden secrets in your dream. As a child of God, you need to start praying and asking and making demand. Lord. What is my assignment? Do you think God doesn't want to show you your assignment? He wants to. 
but you have not bothered to ask. Amen. Because if you don't know these things, along the way, trials and temptations can keep you off. You see, the purpose of knowing the dream, and, and I mean, the purpose of knowing dream and where you are going and knowing your purpose is to avoid pitfalls along the way. Let me give you for instance from the Bible. How many of you know Abraham? Abraham received a dream of his future. Genesis chapter 15 from verse 9 to 6. Let's read it. Genesis. Dreams, your secrets, lied in your dreams. Genesis 15. Verse 9. Are you there? If you are there, say yes. yes. Okay. Now, from, this is the story of Abraham. Abraham was just getting into covenant with the Lord. His name has not been changed from Abraham, from Abraham to Abraham here. So let's read. Genesis 15, verse 9 to 16. It says, And he said, that's the Lord, and he said, Take me an Hepha of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Verse 10. And he took unto him all this and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the birds he divided not. 11. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham, remember it's Abraham, not Abraham, Abraham drove them away. Verse 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. Just mark that. A deep sleep. A deep what? Sleep. Fell upon Abraham, and lo, an horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward they shall come out with great substance. Amen. Look up here. God told Abraham, I'm going to make covenant with you. Get out of your father's house. I'm going to make you a... a a father of many nations, I'm going to bless you. Your name shall be great. Now, those were revelational words from the Lord. Now, when God told Abraham this, Abraham was still not yet certain. Because these were revelational words from the Lord. He, ne he needed to see. Somebody says see. That is why your sight is very important. Sight, that is what is called spirit. I'm not talking about your physical sight. I'm talking about your spiritual sight. Very important. If you hear and you don't see, then your faith is not yet complete. God told Abraham, I will make you a father of, of many nations. And he received the word. But God knew that it was not enough because that word will be challenged. Every word of promise you receive in your life as a child of God, get ready, it will be challenged. When God says you are great, you are, you are in for a big problem. <coughs> when God says you will make it, get ready, you are in for war. When God says he's going to bless your children, hey, get ready. The devil is going to fight those children. He's going to fight those walls to make sure it doesn't come to pass. But there's a way out. Somebody say there's a way out. Somebody say there's a way out. So when God called Abraham, God had to cause him to sleep. Somebody says sleep. To do what? To give him a dream of what he has told him. Because if Abraham had not seen the dream, he may not have believed the word. So God opened his eyes. 
he fell into a deep sleep and darkness came upon him. It means that in every destiny you go through, in, 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 any, in the way you want to get to your vision, darkness is coming. Abraham fell into a trance. It's called trance, deep sleep. It was not just ordinary sleep. It was a trance. He was frozen. Darkness fell upon him. And God wanted to show him that even though I have told you, you are going to be this, you are going to be that, darkness will come. Horror will come. To come against the dream. To come against what I've said. But I have a dream for you. Look at what I'm going to show you. Look at what is going to happen. And God showed him. Your, this same seed. They are going to go through problem. They will go through darkness. For how many years? For how many years? Nobody is talking to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. For how many years? 400 years. My God, 400 years. They were not born yet. And God told him that after that 400 years, <laughs> they will be set free. They will be what? Set free. And they are going to come back here. My God. That must have been the dream and the vision that kept Abraham going. But when Abraham died, the children, they didn't know about that. That was why when they were in the, land, in the strange land, they cried, they prayed, they begged. Nothing happened. Why? Because it had already been foreseen that by this so, so, so time, God said, the fourth generation, read your Bible. The what? Fourth, oh my God. When, when you go into the land of dreams, God gives you specific. Somebody say specific. God is a God of details. He doesn't just write <laughs> aimlessly. He gives details. Have you bothered to ask him about details of your life? God gave accuracy. Fourth generation. And Abraham knew it. But the children didn't know it. When they got into the, slave, in the land of bondage, the first generation were crying, Lord, deliver us. Deliver us. But they never knew it's not first generation. It's third generation. The first generation must have been a little bit close with Abraham. They must have heard more about Abraham. They believed first generation died. Nothing happened. Do you know that? It is more dangerous. You see, when God talks to you direct, he gives you the, the vision, the dream. He gives you the specific do you know that when, when you go, for another person to believe what God tells you is very, very difficult. Because they didn't receive it directly from God. The man who receives it directly from God becomes sure. Becomes confidence. And that is why, even though I'm preaching the word of God to you, you may not believe it. Because you have not received it. You don't have a dream about that. That's why sometimes it's difficult for you to, get, to have faith. Because you don't understand what this man, where this man is coming from. Because you have not received it. And that is why I'm praying today that you will receive it. When you receive it, your faith rises. When you receive it, your confidence rises. When you receive it, darkness cannot cover you. Amen. Dreams. May the Holy Spirit open your eyes. Because it is you. When you receive it, it becomes more real. That is why Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord, but the things that are revealed belong to us. Until it is revealed to you, you don't have access. Until it is revealed to you, you don't have faith. 
I can prophesy over your life. I can tell you this. I can tell you that. But until you have an encounter and receive it in your spirit, then, only then it becomes real. It becomes no longer somebody told you. You see, if I prophesy to you, you hold me accountable for the prophecy. Hello. <laughs> Am I saying something today? If I prophesy to you, hey, you say, hey, yeah, Pastor Tony said. <laughs> Pastor Tony said, oh, yes. You hold me accountable for that prophecy. Assuming if it doesn't happen. Huh? Assuming if it is delayed. And I say, ah, Pastor Tony, did you, did you hear very well? <laughs> and that's our problem. Even though God spoke through prophecy, because you have not received, it, you have not got a revelation of that prophecy. When he's delayed, you say, no, God, what is happening? Did, did that man of God hear well? You are doubting because you did not receive it yourself. That is why it is not real in your spirit. But when you receive that prophecy, either through dream or vision, it becomes real in your spirit. Even though there is a delay, you keep seeing the red light in your spirit. It's real. Even though there is darkness, you keep seeing that red light in your spirit. It's real. God showed me. It's real. That was why Abraham could not doubt. The first generation, the first generation they doubted. They died. They had faith, but they died not seeing the result because the time was not yet. Then the, the, the second generation carried, they, they carried over information. They too believed and believed and believed and believed. They died. Nothing happened. The fourth generation took it up. They believed. They, they died. Nothing happened until the fourth generation. And by then, the, the, the weight of the prophets, the weight of what they are hearing has lost value. That was why when Moses appeared, it was difficult to believe him. You see, when you don't receive the revelation of what God is showing you about your future, when your future comes, you won't even know your future has arrived. Hello. Hello. Because you didn't receive it. Somebody told you. You can be standing right before your future. And then you, you still don't know that, hey, your future has arrived. What God has shown you in the dream has arrived. Because you didn't receive it by revelation. When it comes, you say, this is not it. You even kick it away. You, keep, you push it forward again. Hello? Dreams. Are hidden secrets of your destiny. When Moses arrived, their future, when Moses, Moses was their future, they waited for Moses for 400, for how many years? When their future came, they said, Moses, away with you. Do you know, they even, instig they even instigated and reported him to Pharaoh that he, he's the killer. And Moses had to do what? Run away. Another 40 years was added. Hallelujah. What am I talking about this afternoon? Dream. May the Lord open your eyes to see your future. May the Lord open your eyes to tell you that where you are is not the end. You see, dream is like unveiling the darkness, unveiling the cloud, unveiling the confusion, and see what God has in provision for you. May you dream a dream. May you do what? And it is good to see it earlier so that when the crisis comes, you know that this is not, this, this is not my end. Hmm? It's not my end. <laughs> because at times, crisis can come in such a way that it wants to kill the dream. 
it wants to make the dream that the, that vision God has given you can never come to pass. But if you have gotten a revelation, a dream about it, the devil can steal it from you. Hallelujah. How many of you know the world we are living today is a world of dreams? Everything you are seeing is a world of dreams. Even the light bulbs you are seeing was gotten through a dream. Thomas Edison is a Christian who had a dream of the light bulb. And there came the light bulb after more than 10,000 trials. Hello. 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 Even God can even show you a dream of, of next year. God can show you situation. It's when you make demand. Make demand, brother. Make demand. Make demand. Make demand. Tell your neighbor, make demand. Tell your neighbor, make a demand. Make a demand. God is not... God, look, the God we are serving is, is not a God of impossibility. He can do things beyond our widest imagination. It's because we have not demanded. We have not what? Demanded. We have not what? Demanded. Most of the cures of the sicknesses you see today, we are gotten through dreams. Believers, scientists, who called upon God, God, what is the way out of this problem? Because in every generation, there is a prevailing sickness. A, in every generation, there's a sickness that cannot cure, that cannot be cured. How many of you know that? How many of you know that? Only a few people. <laughs> there was a time malaria was a deadly disease with no cure. There was a time, am I right? There was a time dengue fever was a killer disease. Huh? Am I right? And then somebody had to sit down. <laughs> And God had to inspire him. This Jewish scientist. And then he got, the, he got the cure. How many of you know that AIDS was a killer disease? Am I right? But today, today, huh? today, today, Skaran, now. Now, 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 now. I mean now. <laughs> now. It's no, longer, it's no longer feared as a killer disease. Because there is something they are working to stop it. Same also now is cancer. Cancer is a key. In this generation, a cancer is a killer disease with no cure. But I believe that if, if men and women will call upon the Lord and sit in his presence, God will give them the dreams of how to get a cure for cancer. Without us wasting too much time to pray, cancer go, cancer disappear. Huh? Because God wants us to live in divine health. Not divine healing. Hello. God is also a God of medicine. Huh? Jesus understood the use of medicine. Huh? <laughs> Am I talking tonight? Am I talking today? Dreams. May the Holy Spirit open your eyes. May you receive a revelation of where you are going so that you can have the confidence that nothing that comes your way that will stop you. Amen. I can remember 20 years ago, or more than 20 years, I was asking the Lord, Lord, what is my call? What is, do you, did you actually call me into ministry? Give me a sign. Give me a revelation. I want to know. And I remember that day I made a real demand from the Lord because this is my life. I don't want to make mistake about it. Lord, show me. And that night, I got a mighty dream from the Lord. God, in that dream, began to take me to places. And those places were darkness. There was no human being. No human being. But I, all I noticed is that in my hand, I found the Bible. And the Lord said, open that Bible in darkness. I said, there is no, there is no human being here. How can I open Bible in the dark place? Because open your Bible. And I opened the Bible. God said, preach. To who? To darkness? He said, God said, preach. And as I opened the Bible, and I began to preach. Do you know what? Light from nowhere came. 
and I noticed the, dark, the darkness. There was no longer darkness. I was seeing heads of human beings. Heads. I said, wow. So I closed my Bible and I moved. Me I moved. The crowd was still following me. And I got to another place. The same thing. Darkness. And when I woke up, I began to ask the Lord, Lord, why the darkness? I should go to a place where there is light. <laughs> God said, yes. It is the kind of people I will be sending you to. It is the kind of places you are going to go. Nothing will be happening, but when you get there, things will start happening. When you get there, there will be darkness, there will be confusion. But as long as I'm sending you there, be ready, light will come. No matter how bad the situation may be. No matter how dark the situation may be, light will come. You just obey me and go. And that's why I knew when the vision for Indonesia came, when I had all the news before coming, I said, yeah, that's part of the darkness, God said. <laughs> Don't be afraid, you just go. And when I came, wow. You can see what the Lord is doing. Dreams. God has a better future for you. You need to ask. You need to do what? Ask. And when you ask, God will reveal to you. You can imagine God showing Abraham what he will do in the next 400 years. He was not moved. He has seen it, so he was not troubled. I believe when he was at the bosom of, of, of the Father in heaven, and those children were crying, oh, God, you have forgotten us. He says, sorry. He didn't forget you. He was waiting for the time, the right time. You know, sometimes we cry, oh, Lord, you are forgetting me. And God said, no, I didn't forget. It's not, it's not time yet. Huh? Have you ever come to that point in your life and you feel that you're on a crossroad? There is no way to go back, to go front. It's like, oh, God, you have abandoned me. God said, no, it's not yet time. It's not yet time. God just want you to go through a season. Do you know at times we want to pray the season of God out of our life? But God said, no, you can't pray it out. You got to go through it. Some of us, we experience lack. And we think, oh, God hates me. Why am I experiencing this lack? Let this lack go away. God said, no, you got to stay in it. <laughs> so that you can have more confidence and more faith in me. Huh? Some people, oh, Lord, I bind this lack. I cast it out. Get out. Get out. Get God said, no, you have to remain there. Why? God said, yes, I want you to have more faith in me. Some of us we want to pray the season of God out of our life. No, it's part of the dream. It's part of the step from getting to where your dream is. So you can't pray it out. You must go through it. That's why some people, when they say, I have fasted, I have prayed, I have done everything I need to do, and I can't just understand why things are still like this. I've done everything I need to do. They told me if I fast more, things will get better. Have you ever been told that? Fast more. No, pray more. You need, you don't have faith. <laughs> so you need to ha have more faith and God said no it's not because I want you to experience something because you can't buy that experience and it is that experience that brings wisdom if you lose the experience you lose the wisdom God said I am allowing you to go through this experience so that you can have an encounter with wisdom. And you want to pray the experience. Ah, God said, no, you got to go through it so that you can get the wisdom. Amen. Hello? Hello? Amen. Hello? It's part of the process. You can escape so many things. You can escape the traps of the enemy by your, by, by your dream. You can escape debt. You can escape misery. Because you know this is not the end. This is not the end. 
This is not the end. This is not the end. Why is America the greatest nation on the earth? Hmm? Why not British? How, how come America is, even is it's like it's outliving British, even despite all the things they have, despite all the wicked things coming from there? Why is it the greatest nation on the earth? Because of dream. Somebody say dream. <laughs> Do you know America was not, America was discovered by dream. This man named Col Christopher Columbus. Columbus was in, is, is from England. And there was a lot of maltreating, a, a lot of, I mean, hypocrisy. The word of God was being diluted. Bible was being, things were going very bad. And suddenly, he had a dream. God showed him another land. There is a land I'm taking you to. And in that land is a place of perfectness. It's a place my word will be preached. It's a place that even, even the currency is going to bear my name. So what can, where, where can that kind of land exist? Because there have never been a record of even a currency carrying the name of God. The Roman currency carry what? Caesar. That's why in the days of Jesus, they said, <laughs> hey, 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 listen, listen. Do you give taxes? Do you pay taxes? Because they wanted to catch Jesus. And Jesus said, bring the coins. <laughs> bring the note. Who is on the note? Caesar. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar. And give unto God what is God. So in his, there have never been a nation that had the inscription of God on their currency. And God gave this man a dream. I'm taking you to a land. You are going to go to a land that even the currency is going to carry my name. Amen. Wow. And that's how he set up. And that's how he discovered America. When he got to it, he was just going on. Was because those days, there was no direction. Those days, you don't travel by plane. You just go on the sea. Just be going. <laughs> he was just going. He was just going. He was just going. And when he, when he got to the place, God said, this is the place. And then he discovered America. And that's why, you see, even despite all the things that has been, that has been you see, George, George America, you see, the foundation, brother, the foundation, revival is coming back. That is why the enemy is against that nation. Because that is the only nation in the world that has affected the whole world positively and the devil began to invade that nation to make sure because anywhere positive is coming from the devil want to put negative so that negative also will be coming out that is why the whole demons in the world they are not in india huh? <laughs> the worst demons in the world they are in america why because they want to kill the dream they want to kill the vision but it cannot be killed because the dream is from God. Amen. That is why you see them fighting. They take Bible out of the school. Why? Because of the dream. Even they are fighting now. That, hey, that currency, we got to do something about it. <laughs> we got to take out that name from that currency. Why? Because they are fighting the vision, the dream. But no man can fight the dream of God. The more you try to attack it, the more it will get advanced. The, the more you try to kill it, the more it comes alive. That is why you cannot die. That is why God's purpose in your life cannot die. Whatever the enemy launches at you, brother, it will make you bigger. It will make you better. It will make you stronger. Whatever attack, whatever arrow, whatever shooting is giving you, he's not making you bad. He's making you better. Somebody say better. Say better. Say better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I have a dream. <laughs> it's going to happen. You, you believe God. Now, let me, let me open your eyes to something that is going to happen in Asia. You see, Asia has, Asia has been neglected as one of the, you know, 
Asia, Africa neg neglected. But I'm telling you, in this millennium we are going into, I'm telling you, Asia is going to be an abode for success. It's going to be an abode for greatness. It's, it, it's going to be one of the most peaceful places to live on the earth. Where there will be no guns. Somebody coming into your house carrying guns on your head. It's going to happen. Because the Lord has shown me. See, prof this is the prophetic time of Asia and Africa. The tide is going to change. The worst places you used to hear about is going to be the best places people will want to go to live. Because it is God that owns the land. God said every nation has a destiny. Every nation has a purpose. And most nations that are being degraded today is because of the dreams God has put in that nation. Go watch it. Any nation that they are having so much war, so much drought, go and search. That nation is rich. Want me to give you an instance? How many of you know Iraq? Iraq, Iran. Do you know that everything started from that region? Abraham is from that region. Do you know that? That nation, they are so rich. All the story in the Bible come from there. Don't you think there is something there? There is. That nation is, is so rich. You see, all oh, is flowing under. But because of their destiny, that is why the enemies, hey, come on. This place is going to be a war zone. A place where people will be afraid to go. But I'm telling you, God is going to change all that. Because the Bible says this end time, the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the water cover the sea. Amen. The glory of the Lord is going to cover the earth as the what? water cover the sea. Come on. Have you ever seen how water cover the sea? God said that is how my glory in this end time is going to cover the earth. So I want to encourage you, stand strong. Stand strong. Because your light is about to shine. Amen. 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 Your amen is so cold. Chill. Amen. Okay, we'll pray now. Close your eyes. Tell the Lord, dream. A dream is a penetration into the darkness of the future. A dream is an enlightenment. A dream is a light at the end of the tunnel. I want you to make demand right now. Say, Lord, help me open my eyes. Let me see beyond where I am. Let me see beyond where I am. Open my eyes. Let me see beyond, beyond, beyond this crisis. Beyond my emptiness. Beyond my doubt. Lord, let me see. God can show you even right now. You can even have a dream right now. You can daydream and see your future right now. You can daydream and see things going well in your life. Lord, open the portal of your glory. Open the portal of information, divine information right now. Open it, Lord. Let us have access. Let us have access to the file. Every human being born has a file. The Bible calls it the books of books in Revelation. We have the book of life and the book of books. The book of books are the files of your life that gives intricate details and steps of where you are going and what you are supposed to do. Lord, I'm praying right now. Open the books of books. Unveil the file. Unveil the information on the file. Consigning everybody here, oh God. Let them see, Father. Because when they see, they will stop living the, the level they are living in right now. Sweet Holy Spirit. 
Inagabo show me show me kaida kaya bakuski irabada kina haraboshke na yabakuri baga saliada baiki dele bosh kaya dahaki mandi le boski yabababa open the books 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 Jesus more than feeling we want more than feeling Lord we want revelation yes Lord we want more than knowledge we want revelation give us a dream give us a light give us direction Lord everybody stand up right now worship him stand up right now worship him you are in the land of dreams you are in the land of God's vision Janina Hayanda Libraka Kora Lava Yashima Lava Baba 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 Some mysteries in life are so difficult to understand. There are things in your life that is so difficult for you to explain. You don't understand why it's happening. But I want you to know God can speak to you through dreams. God can show you the way out. Speak, Lord. 